and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, with the City of Hampton's Communications and Marketing Department. And in reality, we're sitting on the site of what used to be Harbor Square Apartments, at least in my lifetime. But my guest, Mike Cobb, is going to have us go back in time, peel back a few layers of time, and tell us what this used to be. Robin, as the spring of 1861, the Civil War had begun, three courageous enslaved African Americans were working on the Confederate fortifications at Sills Point, present-day Norfolk Naval Base. They made the decision to escape. They commandeered a small boat, made the perilous crossing across Hampton Roads Harbor to Fort Monroe, and they asked for asylum. General Benjamin F. Butler, in charge of Fort Monroe, granted them asylum. They were not completely free, but they were not completely enslaved at this point. Very soon thereafter, 10, 20, 100, and later thousands of enslaved people made their way to Fort Monroe, which they called Freedom's Fort. Butler declared them contraband. Very soon, two camps are built, one near Fort Monroe and right on the site that we are on now, this, this very historic ground. This was called the Grand Contraband Camp. And I want you to imagine this ground around us with hundreds of cabins built from slab logs. In fact, they call these camps slab towns. A slab is the first rough cut of a log and these simple cabins were made from that type of material. When a man and a woman, for the first time, went inside their cabins and pulled the latch and locked the door, they stood on semi-free ground. One man called these cabins our slab town, our slab log mansions. That's how important they were. This is one of the first steps to the Emancipation Proclamation, and it happened right here in Hampton. That is so exciting. So this is an official dig and the city has contracted um, with the company to do it. It's been going on now for about, what, two weeks? It's been going on for about two weeks and the city did. Uh, many, many citizens in Hampton were very much interested in this. There are many descendants living in Hampton who, are, who were related to the contrabands, to the original contrabands. And so that's very much alive and very much important uh, in, to members of our, of our community. Well, you have to, I mean, what the rest of Hampton looked like at this time was kind of not much. I mean, had it all been burned, a fire. <laughs> there August. wasn't a lot left. They were the citizens of this area. August and they, they st a lot of them stayed. Obviously, some of them migrated, but a lot of them stayed, started the churches that we see downtown today, became the cit citizens of Hampton. Hampton was in ruins in 1861, had been burned. Uh, African-American contraband folk settled here. They established right off two churches, the First Baptist Church, 1863, Queen Street Baptist Church, 1864, institutions which are still thriving. The People's Building and Loan was located near us and also Union School. So this ground has uh, incredible history related to a very important part of our, of our story here in Hampton. Robin, this excavation is part of a grand legacy in Hampton. Hampton has had many excavations over the years, beginning in the 1970s, actually earlier. And Hampton is one of the, if not the best documented urban archaeological site in America, right here in our town. We should be very proud of that. So that's wonderful. And you and I are going to take a break and we're going to bring back one of the archaeologists who's actually working on this dig and talk about what we found so far and, and what we might find when we're finished. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back. We've been joined by archaeologist Dave Hazard. Welcome. Hello. Hello, thank you. Thank you. Now, I'm looking around here and to my extremely untrained eye, all I see are kind of piles of dirt and, and little depressions. But it's obviously much more interesting than that to you. It certainly is, yes. Uh, this looks like just an abandoned, it could be a park here with all the green grass and the trees and everything else. But uh, with the research that's been done regarding the contraband camp, we know that it's somewhere in this area, like I think Mike had said, that it's Liberty ran right through the center of the contraband camp. So we have come out and we're trying to find a place that has not been totally disturbed over these many, you know, over a hundred years here. So um, we've got maps that show uh, apartment buildings here that were standing here until like 2013, maybe 11, 12, 13. Those have since been torn down, but when you see these bumps and in, in different patterns in the grass, you're looking at concrete slabs lying just below the ground. And we as archaeologists, we look at the ground surface 
to see what tells us where to go or where not to go. And so like right here in front of you, this is where a concrete slab was. That's why the grass is not growing very well. Aha, uh -huh. so you overlaid photographs and old Historic maps models. and where you knew there was concrete and did some test digs in some other places that you hoped were promising. We did. we did two test units to see what we would need to do with the machine and how much work, whether there were like three feet of overburden or whether we're dealing with just six or eight inches. I mean, ordinarily on any place you go in, in the world, really, it's several inches of topsoil over subsoil. Mm -hmm. And then if there's any disturbance, somebody digs a hole through the topsoil, they break through the crust of the earth, it leaves some telltale sign. And that's what we're looking for here. And in this case, we're looking for anywhere the contrabands have done something, put something in the ground, like something as simple as a post from a fence line and leaves a mark that we can trace and enclose an, uh, an area, a living space, or a workspace, or a garden, and then anything else that went on like that, wells, uh, maybe if, just anything like that, of sort like. And so, you know, you showed me that, that pit on that side and where people were digging, and you called things features, and to me, they just look like slightly darker dirt than the rest of the dirt. I mean, what, what does that mean? What, is, what could be there? Okay. Um, You've got your dark topsoil, and you've got, let's say, yellow sand clay here is what we've got. When you're seeing those darker things that we're calling features, you're actually seeing the things that man has left behind. So, or maybe a tree, because if a tree were growing somewhere, it's organic, it would leave a dark okay. oval. So we're sorting those out, like connecting the dots in a puzzle. We're looking for orientations. We know the lots were laid out here in 1871. They were 50 feet wide, 212 feet deep. That's when many of the people that had been here as contraband, some were buying these lots, and all of a sudden we get an orientation that's perpendicular to Union and Lincoln Streets, parallel to Armistead, what used to be Liberty. And so now, all of a sudden, if we find something that's in that same order, we're talking 1871 or later. If something is turned to that, we most likely have contraband or something that precedes the contraband. So it seemed to me that something as transient as those slab town cabins, I mean, how much did they leave behind? They weren't here all that long. At some point they became more formalized homes and lots. Um, it was a very short period of time. How much would they have left in that, in that time? Well, one thing that's very obvious, and I think you saw it, and maybe they'll be seeing a picture of this, but for instance, one of the features that we have taken half of the feature out, you'll see a huge animal bone hanging in the sidewall. So and then you'll see oyster shell that haven't been dug yet. You'll see uh, other animal bones. So you're starting to get an idea of foodstuffs, right, what, what they, they were eating at the time. Mm -hmm. So oyster shell, clam shell, bone, animal bone. This in particular case is a large mammal. We just took out the skeleton of a small mammal. So that kind of thing. But then they came here with practically nothing to begin with. So. I, I, a whole lot to salvage from the city because so much had burned. Right. Now, they may have gone into town like the Union soldiers went in, maybe scab because it had been burned. Right. You could be scavenging Some utensils, uh, maybe plate fragments, and things that you might be able to use in your household. Um, any of those things, I understand they might have been issued a, a mess kit from the uh, American Missionary Association. So, and that was a Union uh, military item. Those, some of that might be found in some of these holes, which would really be a pretty close tie to what's going on here. So that's another exciting thing you can look for. So people can come by and watch you work. Yeah. You guys are here um, for how long? Well, it looks like now we'll have maybe another two weeks at this point for this phase of the operation. Well, this is great. Thank you so much, Dave, and I appreciate what you're doing here. I'm going to hang around a little bit longer and um, see some of the things you're talking about and come back and keep an eye on it. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for watching. I hope you will come by and um, get a chance to view this dig and look at what they're doing. Bring your kids by. Um, I would say it's a rare chance, but as, as you heard from Mike Cobb, Hampton is uh, really a very excavated and explored town, but this is a great chance to show the connection to our history. Thank you.